Hi folks, welcome to another What's Ken Making video. This is a little bit different of a video today. You see, last week was my one year anniversary on YouTube. April 15th, 2023 was the date that I uploaded my very first video, and it was a video on the Tandy Model 100. And now that it's been a year on the platform, I thought it would be appropriate to spend some time to take just a little bit of a break from kind of the regular programming and to do a bit of a retrospective, to look back a little bit on the year and talk about what I'm thinking for the next year for the What's Ken Making channel. Overall, it's been a very successful first year, I think, on the platform. I released 30 videos in this first year and had around a half a million views and ended the year with over 12,000 subscribers. And it's humbling to think about those numbers. And I'm very grateful, uh, very thankful to you and everyone who's tuning into the channel and taking this journey along with me. Now, as you know, the name of this channel is What's Ken Making? And that reflects my intent on the kind of content that I wanted to produce for this channel. I really wanted to incorporate my love of building things and electronics, hardware, microcontrollers, 3D printing, I wanted to incorporate that into the content of this channel. And for the most part, I have. A lot of my videos have either a build incorporated into them, and some of them kind of focus on building a device. But there's also been some content that I've made that hasn't been maker focused. Things such as my FPGA informational content, my stuff on emulation, or some of my device teardowns, which are certainly interesting and speak to the hardware at a lower level, but aren't strictly focused on making something. And I think that's okay. I've really enjoyed producing that content. And going forward, I want to do more of that kind of content as well. In terms of finances for the channel, I do have Google ad revenue turned on. And that goes a long way towards offsetting the cost of some of the devices that I have to buy to cover on this channel. Also some of the equipment that I use to produce the videos as well as the online services that I leverage. So that is very helpful to kind of offset those costs. You'll also notice that occasionally I do bring in a sponsor in a video and I don't want to do that a lot. But when I do bring in a sponsor, I want to make sure that it's going to provide a valuable service for you, the viewer, that it's going to be relevant for you and for the video itself. And also the, the sponsoring organization is my customer. So I want to provide a value for them as well. Now, one thing that does come up from time to time is the subject of Patreon. And I haven't stood up a Patreon and I don't plan to at this time. And really it's for two reasons. First, I don't feel like I have the time to produce anything above what I'm already doing to provide value to anyone that would be supporting me on Patreon. But second is really just because I don't need the extra money. So there's no point in my mind in standing up a platform and asking people for money when I'm doing fine and I am able to produce videos off of the income from my job some of the Google ad revenue, as well as some of the sponsorship content. In terms of content for the coming year, I want to continue to do more of some of the things that I've started doing on the channel already for this past year. I want to spend more time doing more instructional related material. I want to talk more deeply about some of the technology that I've been covering on the channel. One of the things that I have kind of a larger, higher level concern about is a lot of the, the engineers and hardware experts and software engineers that are coming up in this day and age are, are far separated from this older technology and when this stuff was first built and designed. And when you couple that with this lack of focus that I think we have just in society in general today, um, then I think that creates a large problem for the future of hardware and software development. In particular, you look at uh, kind of the soundbite culture where people take a series of simplified statements and they build truths on, on top of them um, without really understanding what's underneath. 
So what I really want to do is to take a step back and kind of slow down a little bit around some of the technology that I've been covering. And I want to dive more deeply and spend more time parking on and exploring at a deeper level some specific things. Now there's a couple of ways that I'm planning on doing this. The first is I want to start putting together uh, more of a focus on multiple videos that have interrelated topics under kind of a larger umbrella. And so you'll start to see me producing more things under the context of a series. The idea is I want to take a topic and be able to go deeper into that topic over the course of several videos that kind of have a consistency weaved throughout them. Now, at the same time, I also don't want to slow down the production process. These videos take a lot of effort to produce, and I don't want you to have to wait two or three months in order to get like a single deep dive video. So to do this, what I'll be doing is tailoring back the videos in those series to somewhere around 10 to 15 minutes per episode, and then release them serially. So the idea is maybe we have a playlist for that series, which has you know, eight, nine, 12 videos that are 10 or 15 minutes in length each that kind of start at the high level and then go deeper into that technology. And I'm even thinking about what it would look like to produce a series, release them, you know, weekly or every one to two weeks. And then at the end of the series, re-edit and stitch them together into a longer form, you know, hour and a half, two hour, very deep technical documentary around that technology. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to go with this just yet, but what I do know is I want to park on a topic for longer and spend more time diving into that topic uh, over the course of multiple videos. And to kind of start that off, I'm going to be launching into a series on the Famicom. And you'll start to see these videos coming out over the next couple of weeks where I'll start off by giving an overview of the system and then kind of systematically deconstruct the Famicom into different parts and talk more deeply about those specific parts. And the idea is it's all kind of the same theme. It all comes back together. And if you were to watch these videos in this series, one after the other, you would have a really solid understanding of how this thing works. Because in my mind, when I think about some of this retro technology, the video game systems, the 8-bit computers, the thing that's attractive uh, to that for me is that these things, unlike a lot of our modern technology, is understandable by one person. Now, in addition to doing deeper content focused on a specific topic through a series, I still plan on doing one-off videos that go through one particular thing in technology from end to end. There's still a lot of content that I wanna go through on the Mr. and FPGA gaming. There's still some emulation content that I would love to cover. I still have different aspects of retro systems that I'd wanna do just a one-off video for. So you're still going to see some of that. And you'll see some of those interject into the midst of a series that I'm working on just to kind of break up the pace of the content that I release as well. And along the lines of pacing, I do want to release content more frequently. The thing that prevents me from getting a weekly video out now is really just the amount of time it takes to produce a video versus the obligations that I have in work and in my family life and other aspects of, of me engaging with my local community. So I do strive to build more frequent videos and I'm investigating a couple of different ways that I can do that more effectively for this next year and try to get down to having a video out every one to two weeks instead of you know, some of the two to three week gaps that you've been noticing in the channel for the past year. And I'm sometimes asked, what's the best way to support me and the What's Ken Making channel? And the answer is just to keep watching. Watch the videos, share them with your friends, stay engaged, uh, comment on my videos. I'm always open to suggestions. Uh, feel free to leave me a suggestion for a video. Uh, I'm also on Twitter slash X at What's Ken Making, so follow me there and engage with me on that platform as well. 
But really, overall, what I just want to say is thank you. Thank you for the notes of encouragement and the support that you've given me throughout my first year on YouTube. Thank you for letting me into your homes and on your devices. Thank you for letting me share with you what's on my workbench as well as what's on my mind and in my heart. I just pray that these videos, the content that I've produced on this channel, has been as much of a blessing to you as it has been to me. And uh, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say today. So I guess I'll wrap it up by saying, until next time, go make something cool.